Ever since there were people in Ireland, stories have been told of the magical She, a race of shadowy, elusive beings. They're the little people, like the crafty leprechaun and his crock of gold. The mermaid who lures sailors to their doom. And the banshee with her blood-curdling cry. We've all heard these lovely old fantasies, but that's all they are, right? Fairy tales, make-believe, innocent bedtime stories and childish superstitions. Nobody could possibly believe them in this day and age. And so we rest assured, knowing we are wiser and more sophisticated than fools who think otherwise. But bear one thing in mind. According to legend, the victims of these creatures are always the non-believers. And many of the old tales aren't quite so harmless either. Even the most famous of them all, the legend of the leprechaun. The leprechaun's a very tricky wee boy. And the one thing is you should never take your eyes off him, because he'll trick you if he can. There was a young fellow called Michael O'Grady one time, walking through the fields, and he heard the tap, tap, tap. Suddenly, tap, as the story tap, goes, Michael caught sight of a leprechaun. Quick as a flash, he grabbed hold of the little fellow and demanded his pot of gold. Now the leprechaun knew he was trapped, so he took Michael to a certain tree in the middle of a nearby wood. Beneath this tree, he declared, was the treasure. All Michael had to do was dig it out. Michael knew his tiny captive would escape if he left. So he made the leprechaun swear an oath. I'm going to do something and you have to make me a promise. You have to make me a promise that if I mark that tree with this red garter around my leg, you'll keep that ribbon on it. I promise, said the leprechaun. Now, are you sure? I promise, I promise, on my pot of gold. Right, said Michael. He set the wee man down and tied the ribbon round the tree. So off Michael ran to fetch his spade. Into his own house, grabbed the spade, away with him. When he returned, the leprechaun was gone. But the little fellow had kept his promise. A red ribbon was tied to every tree in sight. He'd never find out which one the pot of gold was under unless he dug up the whole forest. Sure, all he could do was laugh. But just goes to show, never trust the leprechaun. They're tricky boys. A little superstitious mischief never harmed anyone, we might think. And yet, some would say that mischief is the least of our worries. For these creatures are said to have a much darker side. All across Ireland are places linked to this dark side of fairy magic. Lonely thorn trees, standing stones and old forts, it's said, should be avoided at all costs. Disturb them and run the risk of incurring a fairy's wrath. Of course, that's just quaint superstition, isn't it? Like all so-called haunting tales, there's really nothing to fear. That's just what a certain fiddle player thought. But as the story goes, he lived to regret it. Well, this was a great fiddler, and he was coming home from a big do. And uh, he could have gone round the road, but... The fiddler was making his way home one night when he decided to take a short cut across some field. Before long, he found himself passing by a rath, or fairy fort. And there on the rim of the fort were the fairy folk, calling out for him to join them. Come in, Paddy. Come in, Paddy. We want you to play for us. Hardly able to believe what was happening, he entered the ring and began to play for his strange hosts. And the first thing they gave him was some great drink, and he loved it. And on he went playing, and they kept dancing all round him. And it went on for The hours passed, and as the fairies danced around him, urging him to play faster and faster, they filled his pockets with gold and his belly with drink. And it went like that for what Paddy thought was the night. And at last they said, Finally, as dawn began to break, they sent him on his way, bewildered but happy, his pockets filled with glittering coins. And uh, when he got near the house, he was... Again. When he reached his house, he was surprised to find a young man standing at his door. What are you doing here? You have no business here, said the man. You've been gone two years, and I've married your wife. 
Suddenly, the fiddler realized he'd been tricked. Quickly, he reached for the gold, but all he found was horse dung. And here they were filled with horse manure and no gold. It was horse manure. <laughs> Still, a pocket full of horse manure and a little stolen time seem harmless enough. And besides, it's all in fun, right? It's just a fairy tale. There's really nothing to fear. Or is there? Like thieves, it said, the fairy folk covet what we treasure most. Many believe they are harbingers of death, in league with the grim reaper himself. It is said that those who have heard the cry of the banishee or the tap of her nails on the window pane on the dead of night will soon...